take one question mark <laughs> take of, one <laughs> of filler episodes so that way um we have things before next week Hello, and welcome to this adventure of a Dice Goblin's Tabletop RPG. I am your host, Just Brett, or the Cloaked DM, and I'm here with the lovely Bright Swords, and joining us this week after having a double shift on Halloween, sad day, is Bloodlust King. If you'd like to introduce yourself in socials, please do. Bloodless King. I uh, usually am a VTuber uh, here on Twitch, uh, potentially Tumblr, uh, TikTok. Wife of my life, um, Bright Swords, would you like to introduce yourself as well or no? Um, I mean, it's just TikTok and I mean, all of my socials are Bright underscore Sword, S-Y-S, Bright Sword Sis. Uh, so uh, if you want to find me there, go for it. Uh, TikTok is my uh, main posting things so so let's catch up um uh, your character blood Yeesh. so that way next time we play we all can be together and all be in the same neck of the woods <laughs> instead of him just being somewhere random uh <laughs> pretty much oh another point of order um bright sword is not playing winifred they're playing another character to kind of fill in the gap so it's not like Winifred's getting extra XP or anything of that sort. I just didn't feel like changing the little icon because I'm lazy. Aiden. Like everyone else says, woken up. You don't remember the sky looking like shattered green glass. Last time you recall, the sky was a beautiful blue. Not a sickly lime green with three fractured parts of the sun battling each other in the sky. What you do remember, as little as it is, a victorious warrior celebrating a wonderful hunt. Or maybe you were retreating. All you remember is that as... I'm going to have to turn on this music because it's lovely, but it's very loud. <laughs> um, is as you were doing whatever you were doing, you looked over towards the setting sun. And something was wrong. It looked like there was a sliver of glass in the sky. Green and gold light shimming around it. As you try to squint and focus on it, it began to flash more violently. And growing brighter and brighter and brighter. Until it was blinding to look at. And anywhere you looked, it still was blinding. A large... And then, all of you heard the crack of the sky. And then this large push of light struck you. Struck everything around you. Loved ones, friends, enemies, everything. was sent flying. You remember hitting something exceptionally hard and your body going limp. The next thing you remember, we did go over this a little bit, but I'm going to do it again as a refresher because it's been a few weeks. It's cold. Even with how <laughs> much of a hunk as your character is. You can still feel the temperature, and your body is aching. Like, you just try to run up a ten flights of stairs carrying too many groceries, but you're not willing to admit that you're carrying too many groceries. Um, why don't you describe what Aiden looks like? Um, so he is a big, big man. Um... Covered in black fur. <laughs> uh, typical lichen kind of facial 
different structures. He's got a snoot, is what you're saying? He's got a snoot. He got a snoot. He got a boopable snoot. <laughs> um, very scraggly kind of uh hair that is like this deep jet black. As your senses refocus, not only do you feel intense soreness and frigid cold, your body is wrapped in intense bandages from the top of your head to the bottom of your toe beans. The weapons that you did carry that seem familiar to you are around. You look around in this, it looks like bunker. You can tell that this ground has either been recently dug out or a landslide came through and cleared this area because the ground is very wet and the covering above you is very makeshift. It seems like it was quickly put down. There are other people surrounding you in similar levels of injury that you are. Some seem to be, unfortunately, past. Others seem a little more alive. Um, in a similar state to you, but none of them seem to be waking at this moment. Whoever the physician is here at the moment is nowhere to be seen. What do you wish to do? So can I move? Like if I try and get up? You can. Or is it... it you're, you're not restrained or anything like that, but it, it's like at waking up after going to the gym for the first time in like a couple months. You're like, why? If, but yeah. 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 Uh, in that case, he is going to definitely try to like get up, get off the bed, get moving around because it's better moving around than sitting in pain. Okay. You do some big stretches, um, moving around, and you hear a <sighs> as you s and a part of the flap opens up, and you see moonlight following the silhouette of a creature um, as it's walking in. It does not seem to notice you yet, as it. Um, it seems to be bringing in a couple of things. Um, it's got, it's carrying a few what looks like either body bags or just large sacks. What do you wish to do? Um. Yeah, he has no self-preservation skills. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he's just going to kind of like, um. Uh... take one last glance around to make sure he's this is the only like moving form in this area mm -hmm. That's, and yeah. uh call it and be like uh this all yours the creature gives you a sideways glance the creature you didn't give a confirmed height for Aiden um however uh, he's about 6 3-ish 6 2-ish okay um, this creature is standing at almost three meters tall. Very Jack Skeleton build and body, very lengthy, very long. His clothing is makeshift um, cloth that seems to be barely holding on and is being held together by similar bandages, or they're just bandages tied on that he may be able to use them accordingly. He's wearing a, think like 1990s scarecrow looking hat from the Batman the Animated Series. Very like cliche witch hat. Um, he is wearing a burlap sack over his face and you, there are two black spots for his eye cavities to be. You do not see his eyes. The raincoat that he is wearing is too small. It barely goes past his elbow and it doesn't go past his knees. He is wearing a, but basically a man purse or like a satchel. Um, and he is carrying um, what looks to be a body over his shoulder and is um, dragging something much bigger behind him. He looks over to you and says, I'll be with you in one minute if you don't mind. The bag begins to move. You see him look towards the bag and the bag begins to glow with glimpses of slight golden and orange light before you see several large chains appear to the ether and wrap around this thing, locking it tight. Um, and you see a large padlock appear onto it. Uh, several, actually. Um, he throws the thing in there, and he gently puts the body down, closing the um, door, and you see that there's a latch that he closes. 
he goes over to a small little workstation that you hadn't really noticed because you were looking at all the bodies. Um, and he turns, he lights a match and turns on a small oil lamp and turns it up so you can see from the... I don't know if I sent you his art. When but... he turns to see you, you do notice that out of, coming out of the left side of the burlap sack and through the um, top of the hat is a large purple jagged and deformed looking horn. Okay. No, no indication of smile or frown on the sack that he's wearing, but he looks over, you can tell that he's smiling by the black gaping holes of where his eyes should be. Glad to see you awake. Apparently it's not an option for others. <laughs> I don't always find everyone in time. And you see he goes over, he's still at his workstation, he grabs a um, small bowl um, and he grabs some of the snow that's even in here. It's You're guessing it's to keep his place a little cooler for people that have fevers. Um, mm -hmm. And he kind of presses it down into the bowl um, and he begins to um, he just has some words to it. You notice that the water it, the, the snow turns into water um, and it seems to be slightly steaming. Um, and he throws some herbs into it and he starts taking off some rags off his coat and starts beginning to dab people's faces and like changing bandages as he's talking to you. His back turns to you a couple of times. If you'd want to do anything while he's doing that, that's up to you. Um. Other than moving around and making sure I'm out of the way, right now this dude is only, the only one that knows where I am. What are you called, by the way? Name's Aiden, but... Pleasure to meet you, Aiden. And you, uh... <laughs> Everyone that I've talked to, he, um, checks someone's pulse, seems a little disappointed, and you see him take out a small little vial, he opens it up, it smells like the strongest vinegar you could possibly imagine, and he just pours it into the person's mouth, and you see their heart, their chest begin to rise and lower again. I've been called the waker by everyone I've met. And it's Susan, all things considered. Waker. Yeah. Okay. Well, where am I? Um, he looks behind him towards where the patch is Noah. We're at the base of a mountain at the moment. Part of a mountain range. Uh, if you want to head a little bit to the, uh, and he points um, west, but for you it's right now, it's your right. Um, there's a coastline, there's plenty of villages and things like that. You could probably find some work. Um, if you want to hit a bit more inland, you might find some game if you get hungry. Um, none of the names from before matter anymore, unfortunately. The world's not turned out exactly how everyone would hope, and I just know a little bit more than you do. What happened to the world? All I remember is a bright flash. And he points here. to the door. Open if you like, but don't make too much noise. There are things out there that would find this place to be easy prey. S some of your kind as well, if I might add. Uh, and Aiden's gonna go and try and poke his head out the door to at least get a good look around. The sky, Let's even see. at night, doesn't look well. It's fractured. The, s the beautiful light of the moon is tr looks like it's either trying to build it together or trying just to bring this certain level of harmony and peace. And for you, I'm sure it does bring some. Um, but this place, at, even at the base of the mountain, you know, there's typically snow and, you know, but there's still some levels of, like, I mean, you live in Colorado, you know what a, the base of a mountain looks like. Yeah. None of the green is green anymore. It all almost looks like it's been, like, um, flash frozen. Everything looks unhealthily gray or white. Um, all trees, um, 
there was a spot that looks clearly once it was a river is now bone dry. Um, the snow here doesn't look like it's naturally formed because snow doesn't pile um, upwards. There are spots where it's clear that something created like a little bit of snow at the base and then went upwards and you see a couple of people frozen to the side of the mountain. Um, you hear earth-shattering roars above you. Sounds like it might be coming from miles away or literally right above you. It's hard to tell with the echo. That don't look right. <laughs> no, I, I think not. And he's gonna pull back in. So... Dangerous out there. Watch my ass. But, um... One sec. Sorry. They're fine. There are but plenty yeah. of places for work and for you probably to find answers. I did find this. And he comes over with this small medallion. Um, it, it's not a medallion. It's more of like it was either a um, like armband that you would wear or maybe it was a part of a chest belt that would hold the weapon. Mm -hmm. Um, and what it is, it's a, um, wolf paw, like the wolf paw print, but it's missing a fi it's missing one of its major fingers in place of a sword. Okay. That was near your body. I don't know if this has any connection to you, but it was kind of a cool piece, and if you didn't want it, I was going to take it. I don't think I recognize it, but I'm also a little bit fuzzy on everything. There's I come across. If I come across them again, they usually have a few more answers. But um, if you're going to head off, I should give you this. And he pulls out a small pouch and puts it in your hand. As he's, he's still working on his customers. Or his patients, I should say. As um, he hands you a small pouch, it sounds, it clinks like um, some sort of jewelry, um, either glass or um, marble. If you open it, um, you yeah. see ten perfectly cylindrical marble marbles. It's what they use for currency nowadays. Marbles. Yeah. I don't get it, but you know, I don't get paid. <laughs> Fair, I guess. Um. Do I owe you something? I guess. Nah. If you see me coming down, just say hello. I meet a lot of people. Might forget your face. Well, he looks over to you. Maybe not. You're one of the few uh, lycanthrope that didn't try to maul me after they woke up. So you know, it's re it's re refreshing. It's refreshing. Happy to uh, not be a menace. <laughs> not guess. a menace. Never a menace. Every doctor should take care of a patient. Doesn't matter if they try to kill you after you're done. But then afterwards, he says, as you see him look to the body bag, you see him take out a, um, what looks to be a very long blade falls out from his coat pocket into his hand. Mm -hmm. Um, but those that are no longer your patients, he extends it, and you see the body, the bag stop moving. Um, in a flash that you cannot comprehend. Um, Back stops doing, but not only that, it unravels and the body's just gone. I have no other reason to keep you around. Fair is fair. The, All right. the blade retrieves back into his arm, or into his sleeve. You go on your way. I say head south, but um, be sure not to head east. 
What's out east? He points to that the empty body bag. Creatures that um, were affected the most with whatever happened. Also, the uh, ground's purple. Ground's not supposed to be purple. That's disconcerting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that he is spiled for most of the conversation you've had with him. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to leave now, or he, he does let you stay until morning if you'd like. Um, but if you ask him any questions about his personal life or anything like that, he's as either he's as, as neat, he has as much amnesia as you do, or he just will repeat, it's basically, I'm just the waker. I just, yeah. actually, if you ask him why he's doing this, is that I just woke up and decided, you know, I like helping people, and apparently I was a doctor, because I'm a pretty good one. Good thing to know, I guess. Yeah. And like some uh, of the yeah. people that he's uh, like unwrapping, they're most they should definitely like even by mar- modern medicine, they should probably just be dead. But somehow he's keeping them alive. But if you say farewell, would you like to hang along the coast or would you want to go more inland? Um. I think he's going to keep to the coast for the first little bit. Mm-hmm. Just because it's a bit more familiar and it's already in the area he's in. Mm-hmm. You can't see and the coastline gets... from here, but you can start smelling the salt water after about an hour of walking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he's going to stick more to where he is for the first little bit till he mm-hmm. gets more of a understanding of where he is and how to survive and then go from there. Okay. Moving right along. Um, <laughs> you leave the base of the mountain. Very quickly, you lose track of wherever that bunker was. Um, you're guessing that's probably intentional or maybe you just aren't paying attention. Um what you first notice as you go through is that there are frozen pine trees, like frozen in movement. A couple of things that you smell immediately other than like, not rotting pine, but this pine that doesn't smell correct, are pistachio trees. Um, If you look around on the ground, there are plenty of the nuts that are still bearing fruit, if you would. Um, which is a good thing. Um, you're able to get a few handfuls of nuts. This the system does not require food, but if you want to say you have pistachios to give people later, you could sort of thing. Um, okay. A couple people are taking care of the the um the seed the trees. I do should ask though, do you wait till morning to leave, or do you go first thing after he kind of says farewell to you? Uh, morning. Okay. People that see you will just immediately run. Um. Uh, they say either wolf, um, monster, demon. Um, and to be fair, there are several scattered, um, bodies that have been wrapped up like they're meant to be buried and have never been buried. And you see large birds of prey. Um, and lots of vultures that are just kind of patiently waiting for some for things to drop, it looks like. Okay. And when I mean, like, large vultures, I mean these things are... Uh, some are uh, almost as big as you are. Like, they are ready. Um, but, if you wish to head more towards the ocean, you certainly may. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys being here. It's always a blast to do things with you guys, whether it be on Twitch or over here on YouTube or even TikTok. Around me, hopefully, if I can set this up properly, links to my other places where you can watch my stuff. If you want to see what I look like and me talk more about Dungeons and Dragons and other fun stuff, check out my TikTok. If you like the way I edit my videos slash the style, check out my Fiverr. If you want to see me stream, I stream 
every day on Twitch. I have a lot of fun there. It's right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Check out my Instagram and Twitter also. Y'all have a great rest of your day. And as always, grab a cloak. It's cold outside.